Hello, hello. How's it going? Good, how are you? Uh, not bad, just frustrated from, from that game I submitted. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I was thinking we'll go over to Nepal. Are you fine with that? Yeah, yeah, how good. All right, awesome, awesome. And uh, what what rank are you again? It looks like you're a Junker Queen pl player, right? What, what rank are you? Uh, bottom of the barrel, bronze five. <laughs> bottom of the barrel, bronze five, oof. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Last season, so, I went from Browns 5 to Browns 1, but I just haven't been playing a ton of rank this season. Mm -hmm. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. All right, so you are Frugger, right? Yeah, yep, correct. Okay. So talk to me about Junker Queen. What are, you, what are you trying to do on this character? What are you trying to do on Junker Queen? Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of new to her. Um... So my understanding, of course, is a little limited, but mm -hmm. um, I was trying, and this may not work, I was trying to apply some of what I was taught by other people, like when I played Ramatra or Ryan, which was to play forward and make space for my healers and DPS and try mm -hmm. not to tunnel focus on the tanks as much, mm -hmm. but... I kind of felt like I had to get away from that this game because it felt to me like nobody else was fighting with me. And that could have been like a lack of situational awareness or positioning on my right. part or many things. But that's, you know, that's how it felt to me. So I kind of altered that, that this game. I don't know if that was the right thing to do or not, but it was frustrating. <laughs> gotcha. Well, I, I'll, I'll be up front and say because you are like such a low rank, there is a pretty decent chance that I'll more be teaching you game basics than Junker Queen basics. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, what, what I what I teach you today might end up applying on every character. I'm not sure because I haven't, you know, seen this VOD yet, but hopefully, you know, what I can give you can kind of help carry over to everything. All right. Gotcha. <clears throat> so let's kind of let's kind of take a look here. So do you, do you know what all of her, her cooldowns do at this point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I've gotten pretty comfortable with her. Okay. How, how many? Uh, how many hours have you played the game? By the way. Oof. I'm. I'm still. I think I'm right around a hundred, but I've only recently started, like, uh, trying to take it seriously and improve. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. Um. Okay. Let's see. My so end. your cross is actually fairly stable for a bronze player. That's one thing that I'm noticing. Hmm. Okay, so right now I'm not looking, I'm not seeing like anything super duper wrong with what we're doing. You might see the POV shake a little bit too. I got a bad habit of bouncing my leg when I shoot, which throws my aim off a little. I see. So wait, is your like, do you have your elbow like resting on your leg? Yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, I, I'm gonna just be upfront and recommend not doing that if that's possible. I know you. I know you mentioned you are like disabled in some way. I don't know if that is is like a reason. Um, but assuming it's not, that's just something I'm gonna recommend not doing in general. Because okay. like, if you if you kind of rest it on your leg, not not only is that just like you know, obviously when you bounce your leg, that's gonna suck for your aim because like your arm's gonna be kind of doing this. But it's also just like actually really bad for your hand to bend like that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's something I'm just gonna recommend like not doing right away. Um. So let's see. All right. So, okay. So, so I, I kind of, I kind of like what I'm seeing here, right? Uh, like what, what, what we're doing right now. So what we're doing right now is like you have a cooldown that kind of lets you play aggressive, and so you kind of go for this aggression right here. I'm gonna actually use uh here, pick, pick, pick a color. Do, do something to contrast with uh, the map. Uh, dark blue, I guess. <laughs> dark blue. Yeah, that contrast. <clears throat> so also, sorry for any like coughing or sniffing. I have a little of a sinus problem oh you're good no worries um so yeah right now you have a cooldown that like allows you to go aggressive because it's like um you know your shout your shout kind of um like you know it gives you that damage buff and also gives you the speed buff mm -hmm. right um so you know you just kind of walk up and when you take the damage you use the shout to kind of keep you up I, I i like that right i think although i i honestly think we might even be able to be like more aggressive and the reason we can be more aggressive is to kind of get to a wall Right, like the biggest thing that you're gonna want to do as like a tank is learn what a corner is and sort of how to play it and why that makes the other team's job hard. So here, right, like let's say I'm this Junker Queen because I actually do play quite a bit of Queen. Um, what I would aim to do 
is I would have I would have done like basically what you did here is like push up, you know, do some shots, try to uh, use my shout. And then like when they back as hard as they do, because they back like really hard, I'm going to put myself right here because that means to shoot me. They need to be, remember if you can see them, they can see you. So in order to shoot you, they need to be here. Right. OK. Or uh, not, not even they need to be like here. Right. And that means that they have to kind of push into this much more aggressive area where your team can punish them. Right. Whereas if you kind of stand on the point, they can shoot you from even over here where your team can't see them at all. You see? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So a big thing that you're trying to do is like sort of nestle yourself between corners so that the other team, like it's a lot harder for the other team to come and get you. Okay. I like this ax. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I do notice a distinct lack of playing cover. That's one thing I'm seeing. But, you know, we'll, we'll need to see more fights before we, we get there. <laughs> so, what do, you, what do you think of what we're doing right now? Uh, what, what do you make If I had to... If I had to, like, really look at it, they're kind of doing what you told me to do, which is to force me to walk up and present mm -hmm. myself to them. But I'm also not seeing anybody with me. Right. A lot of people aren't with you. You know why that is? If you, if you were to guess, why is that? Uh, well, if I look at the HUD, I'm, I'm, I'm also pushing with one down. Right. You're pushing, especially without a Baptiste, right? Uh, I'm going to go change the bright blue, by the way, just to contrast a little more. Um, you're pushing without your Baptiste, right? Like, if you're missing a healer who does a lot of healing, so if you're missing, uh, like, a Baptiste, a Mora, an Ana, or a Kiriko, a lot of the time you're going to want to not push, right? Um, because it's going to just immediately mean that you're missing a huge amount of, of healing on you, right? So here, we pushed in, like, while, like, after, like, seeing in the HUD that our Bap died, Right. Um, and also, it's not that people aren't really with you, right? Uh, like, your Kiriko is helping you, right? Like, she's healing like she should be. Your Sojourn's right next to you, right? Um, so it's not necessarily like nobody is with you. Uh, it's more just the fact that we are pushing when we're down people, right? We don't want to be pushing without our team. There you go. Good kill, right? <clears throat> okay, so here's, so here's something I see as well with, uh, with what we just did. So we push up, right? We try to get a shot, and then you see how we back? Yeah. We back like this and then this way, right? We that that leads us to take so much more damage than if we had just backed like this. Okay. Because we immediately get behind the wall, right? Like a big thing that a lot of like bronze players will have happen is like th they know to play cover, right? Like you know, I think I think at some point you learn to play cover just by playing the game, but they play it very slowly, right? It's like what what good players are going to do is like here actually, you know what? I will load up the map and show you kind of what your what your cover playing should look like more. Okay. Uh Nepal. All right, let's see if I get lucky and get village first try. <laughs> now this actually makes me happy to learn this because my end goal with all this is to get to a rank where I can start playing in, in leagues and tournaments. So getting mm -hmm. this stuff down would Nope, I didn't good. get lucky. <laughs> come on there we go okay so like let's say i was a drunk queen in this situation i'm just gonna use shout because faster <laughs> so i'm junker queen i'm a character without a shield right so like it's not like i can just like put up a shield and like poke right so when i want to do damage i want to like basically i want to take as little damage as possible when i'm doing anything Right. So I can shoot about this often. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I want to like only peek for that shot. You see? Okay. Right. So it's it's then, almost the equivalent, equivalent of like jiggle peeking from CUD. Yeah. Yeah. It's very similar to jiggle peeking. In fact, that is what it is. Right. It is jiggle. Um, it's just like, you know, it depends on your character's kind of uh, like what your character can do. Right. So like a lot of characters that fire semi auto are going to do this. Right. Um, so even if, if you're like Sigma, right? You're like fire two orbs, chill, fire two orbs, chill, fire two orbs, chill, right? And then like eventually the other team is going to be like, like, if they're standing in the open, they're going to be like, oh, I need to back up as well, right? So then they're going to back to here, right? 
And that leaves you room to do what we just talked about, right? Where you kind of walk forward and try to kind of nestle yourself in this nice corner here, right? And then like they're on this side, they can't do anything to you and you have point control. So then when they try to push, you can go and like, you know, hit them with the ax, right? You shout, you have your knife, right? Gotcha. Um, another thing with Joan Queen, do you, do you know that her, her melee is special? I don't really know a lot about that now. Uh, okay, okay. Um, well, here, a Joker Queen actually does have some very specific mechanics to her, just like how she works. So I'll just quickly explain those to you. If I, my frames aren't zero, what the fuck is going on? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, Joker Queen has a very specific mechanic to her called uh, wounds, right? <laughs> Whenever she hits with a weapon that isn't her shotgun, she deals some type of wound damage, right? So this means that when she hits with her axe, I do that initial damage, but then I also have that ticking. You see how like that it ticks down for a few, okay. right? That has that does extra damage to the other team, obviously, but it also heals me a bit, right? So like, here, let me go take some damage. Okay, I I get it now. That's a, like really si similar to a Darius bleed from League. I played. Sorry, I, I associated. No, you're good. Things. You're good. All right, so yeah, I have three hundred five HP. Right, so I'm gonna hit, and you see my health goes up a bit. Right. Okay. So one of the main things you want to do as Junker Queen is hit as many times as possible with her with her weapon. So also you can do it with her knife, right? So like whenever you hit knife, you see I like my health also goes up there. Um and then another thing to keep in mind with her knife is that you can actually toss your here, I'm gonna, I need to take more damage for this. Now her knife can go through multiple targets at once, right? Right, and, okay. and that bleeds all of them. Okay. Right. However, if you hit somebody, I'm pretty sure it only goes through that person. So it really depends, right? Like if you're hit, if you're sticking somebody directly, then that means you want to kill them because it does a lot of damage. Um, but if you just want to like trigger some bleed damage, then you just toss it behind. So like, let's say I'll toss it like here and then I move like this. And then when it comes towards me, both of them are bleeding. Right. Mm, okay. Um, and additionally, it does it with her melee because her, she melee is with her knife. You see? So when I do this, my health also goes up. Right. So basically, whenever you can, you are hitting with these cooldowns, right? Um, so that's something to keep in mind uh, with, like, how you should be doing that, yeah? All right. Does, does head, uh, head level crosshair placement really matter with most tanks like her? Or is it just pretty much... Absolutely. Okay. It, okay. It matters with anybody that does headshot damage, right? So if we look at the tanks, who actually doesn't do headshot damage? Well, Winston, Ryan, and Sigma. Or, and Zarya. Yeah, Winston, Ryan, Sigma, and Zarya, right? Interesting. Um, so everybody else, though, can do headshot damage, right? Like, do you know the headshot multiplier? Uh, I did at one point, but two. I don't think... A, two, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to fire one shot with Eva. I did that much damage. Now I'm going to fire at the head. Double. Oh, wow. Right? So let's, like, even Junker Queen, right? We go like this, right? It does that much damage. We go like this. It kills, right? Hmm. Junker Queen, I would say, is especially important. Um, like Junker Queen is really important with it. I'd say Doom is really important with it. Arisa. Uh, Ram is less important just because most of the time you're not doing most of your damage with your left click anyways. Um, but like it, it can be a pretty powerful left click, right? Um, so yeah. yeah I, I, I would say it's, it's just always a good habit to have, for sure. Like head level crosshair placement. Okay. <clears throat> yeah so so far i haven't seen what you've been talking about about your team not fighting with you right like the one instance where we might have had that like your team just you know they, they could not right like your back was not there with you right yeah so let's, let's go back to where we were right we take a lot of unnecessary damage kind of with this poke is like what i was talking about right um okay so so we shout like this right I would say this is not a very great shout. Why, why do you why why do you think this is not a very great shout? Hmm. Well, for one, I think I I'm pretty sure I did it before I even had view of what was there. Nor you, you knew what was there. I mean, you you'd been fighting in that room for a while. I'd say you knew what was there. Honestly, I don't know. Well. Let's see. So shout adds 200 HP to us, right? Um, and it gives us a, a little bit of a speed boost, right? Although the speed boost is, um, like, we, like, we shouldn't be shouting just for the speed boost. Um, we should be shouting much more for the extra HP that it gives us and that it gives our teammates, right? So if we actually look at this, 
we were we were out of the fight right like like right before we shouted we weren't really fighting them right like we could have just st stood here and let our kiriko heal us right we didn't need that extra 200 hp right what if we had healed up walked in then taken more damage and then shouted you see what i'm saying okay yeah right like that would have made this this overheal a lot more impactful because we would have just had more hp to tank everything with right um you do know your your ability combos okay with her ult that was that was all right yeah you do you do know your your knife to axe so that's pretty good <laughs> yeah I've, I've watched enough of the among to know to <laughs> mm -hmm. do that All right, so here again is like, why, like, why, why are we shouting? I see. Okay. Right. Yeah, because it's they're not even they weren't even looking at me at that point. Right. Not to mention you weren't even in. Like, like right. even if they are looking at you, it's like if you can't use the overheal it gives you, if it doesn't either save your life or let you be aggressive, then like it's not useful overheal, right? And additionally, here we can jiggle peek around this uh, cover right here, right? Like we don't need to be standing right in the middle of nowhere. We can stand right here and jiggle peek around this. You see. Like we we could we literally just like just shot right like we, we take the shot and then we go back right shoot go back shoot go back right we don't need to be standing in the open taking unnecessary damage yeah so here we went for the axe swing right I would say that this is not really a good axe swing just because it's it doesn't help you get a kill it's not really like in the mid fight where it's hitting a lot of people um and like do, like doing a lot of damage. Um, and it's not really, it's not really keeping you alive either because you don't really need, right? Because like, again, the big thing the axe does is like, if it can hit a lot of people, that's a lot of bleed damage. And so you're getting a lot of health back, right? Yeah. Well, now that I think about it too, doing it prematurely or unneeded like that, don't I leave myself vulnerable? Right. Yeah. Okay. That's a very good, that's a very good way of looking at it because, okay. uh, now if we look, well, let's, let's say the Siva pushed in now, what do we really have to deal with it? Well, we don't have our axe and we don't have our shout, right? right. So if she pushed us right now, we're kind of vulnerable. You're correct. So one thing that I will say is that here, I do feel like we can be pushed up more, right? Like the enemy team isn't even like at the choke yet, right? Like only like the D.Va is and you can just, you know, you you can fight D.Va, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would say we could have like pushed up almost to where like our Echo is and just like gotten ult charge, right? Um, because the more that you can charge your ult, the better because your ult is like really, really good, right? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so like here, it's like, like there's no reason to be fighting on point, is there, right? Like, they're, like, this is, like, just a solo diva at this point, right? Like, you should be trying to push her. You kind of just, like, stop looking where the other team is. Yeah, that actually angers me that I did that now that I'm seeing it. I should have thrown knife right there. Yeah. So that was a much better shout, by the way, right? Like, that shout was kind of when you were taking a lot of damage, you know, when it could be used to keep you alive, right? So that was pretty decent. Uh, okay, another thing, by the way, we just made our life a lot harder, right? So first of all, we still have healers alive, and there's cover right here. I don't think that we had to like back up to point right this second, right? But uh, but I wanna I wanna show you something. Uh, let, let's let's look at how we back here. All right, all right. So we back up in a straight line. Okay. Now let's let's look at their Hanzo's POV and see how easy it was for him to headshot you. Right, so he's like firing shots, right? You go for the axe swing, right? And then you start backing up in a straight line. And he's just oh, able wait. to trace his crosshair right on me because I didn't move. Right, you see? Like, you see how easy of a shot that was for him? Yeah. Right? Never move in a straight line in Overwatch. Okay. Never move in a straight line near an enemy. You can move in a straight line to come back from spawn. Right, I get, like, you can, you can walk straight from spawn. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah, so back to you. All right. Um, so while we're fighting the Steva, we could easily have done what I kind of talked about here. It's like you kind of sit here, and then the Steva, again, she has to expose herself uh, to her, to like your whole team who is over to the left there, 
if you play here, right? Like she can, like she has to expose herself to your whole team, right? And like what you can do is you can basically stall here with your team's healing. And then like, if you get push and if they really force you out, that's fine. You can just shout and walk away, right? Because like that extra HP, you see? Gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, so here we have Shao. Okay, so what do you what do you think of, of this Junker Queen ult? I know what I thought it was gonna do, but looking back at it, it just mm -hmm. doesn't really make any sense for me to do. Right. There's two main weaknesses of Junker Queen ult. What are they? Oh gosh, you know what? I don't really know that. So. Number one, at the beginning, she has some startup time, right? Um, and that startup time can be very significant. Like in this case, you were at 220 HP, right? And because of the startup time, you're dead, right? So you probably don't want to be doing it unless you're like pretty full, right? Um, and then another thing is that it can get completely canceled out by Kiriko Clans. Because what it does is it applies an effect to the other team, right? Clan like Kiriko's Bell, like her Suzu, that cancels out every effect in the game. Like it cleanses them, right? So by doing this here in the open and before the Kiriko has used her cleanse, you have now, like, like, what, like what you've done here is you've gotten yourself killed and you've also gotten no value from the ultimate. Because even though it, like, look, look it hits three people, right? Look at this. Boom. Now it's, now it's just useless, right? Hmm. Okay. right like, you see what I mean? So whenever you're playing up against a Kiriko in specific, you should always wait until you see, like, when the enemy team flashes white, like, whenever somebody on the other team flashes white, that means that she used the bell. Um, that means, like, she used the cleanse, and then you can use your, your queen ult. Make sense? Okay. <laughs> so here... Say, let's 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 take a look at something. Where where are you? You you where, where do you feel like you are? Good spot, bad spot. Uh, definitely off in Narnia, considering the rest of my team is, are is nowhere near. <laughs> right, they're still coming back from spawn. Yeah. You see, one healer is not even out of spawn yet, and the other one hasn't even like begun to get in the effective mm -hmm. range of me. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of the end of this round, right? Like a lot a lot of um a lot of ability mishaps um and a lot of just like um not not knowing where our not knowing what's like the state of our team. It's all right though. I'm gonna, gonna push forward, see what we can do. So, what would you say? What would you say this is this this big pillar here? Uh, that is a very good source of cover that I never Correct. use. <laughs> right, this is a great source of cover. So right now you can stand here and just like punish this May, right? Or you can even like jiggle peek around and punish the Hanzo, right? And then like they can back up. You see, like this is a great source of cover. Good eye. Right. Use your shot to keep yourself alive, right? And like this is one of the reasons that um like you want to use cover so much is because you've shouted like really early in the fight. Thankfully, like, like your widow gets picks, right? And sometimes widows are just going to get some kills and that happens, right? But if your widow doesn't like get kills here, what actually happens? Well, you've used your only really like lifeline, right? Like because you gotta think about it as far as like how long can you stay in and like be aggressive, right. right? As soon as your shout runs out, you can't be aggressive anymore. So because we didn't play cover, we took a lot of damage and had to shout really early. That means, like, for the next 15 seconds, because that's how long the cooldown is, we can't be aggressive, right? Um, so that, that, that's, that's about the length of a team fight. Very rarely are you getting two shouts in a team fight, right? Um, so, like, that, this is one of the reasons why, like, we play cover so much is so we don't get that super important cooldown forced early. And hell, I mean, even here, right? Like, we had to back out even though our team got two kills right? Just because we didn't have the HP to stay in. So, like, we should have control of the point from getting two picks, but because we misused our shout, we now have to fight for it still. Like, like right, right now, why aren't we pushing? We have shout. Like, yeah. There you go. They're down. There you go. Nice.
this is another thing right here that bugged me because I felt like I missed it this. After seeing that person go down, I just sat here on point. And mm -hmm. come to think about it, I should have. I feel like I should have made space and tried to get my team to move up a little closer and hold, mm -hmm. hold right. choke. So you think like holding up here? Yeah, like right, the, mm -hmm. like either at that uh, corner doorway or playing off of that pillar behind it to the right. I like this. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Uh, because th this is a very hard choke to hold just because there's so many doorways to it. And also there's a high ground staring right at it. But playing here is not bad at all, right? Yeah, I, I think that's a really good eye. Um, and just as well as like, you can like do extra damage to the other team and make them not want to push up yet, which can give your team time to come back, right? So it's like, you stay here, you fight them for a bit, right? Like you force them all to group up uh, like fully to push you out and then they push you out and then you back away, right? And then by the time you back away, your Baptiste is probably back, right? Okay. Good way to think about it. Yeah, like here, like they're just pushing up for free, right? Like if you had been able to do some extra damage, it might not have happened like that. Also, you're not really confronting their tank, are you? Like you did just yeah. kind of let this Winston walk in. Yeah, that was definitely yeah. one of those times where it would have been okay for me to go after him because he's, yeah, he's just getting so much free roam up there. Right. That was so, so dumb. Why, why do you say it's so dumb? I mean, it looks fine. The Kiriko's gone and, you know, you didn't die from it. Um, I will say you did, you did make a, a small mistake of like you didn't follow up on the right people from it. Because, like, the Mercy was the squishy who got hit by it, and you should have been, like, just hard pushing her to make sure that you secure that kill, right? Because it's, like, what it does is it applies on an 8 effect, and it does a little damage. But it doesn't do enough to kill on its own, uh, so you have to follow up on it, right? So, like, if you hit, like, a squishy, you need to be pushing that squishy hard, right? So I think, I think next time, if we just go on the Mercy, that was actually a pretty decent ultimate. May ult moment. <laughs> yeah, I like this, right? Like you're kind of punishing the other team for pushing, right? Yeah, I mean, this is very solid, right? Like, you, you almost kill the Kiriko, right? You force resources, you force the monkey to bubble. And then I right? throw then a you... knife at a bubble. <laughs> I, it, it's okay. I'm really not worried about stuff like that, you know? Now, that's how, you know, that's the type of stuff that, like, you're noticing very easily and you can kind of do on your own, right? All right. I'm not all torn up about it. Right, so here, you know, as uh, as we talked about, we could probably be pushing up to that pillar. Yeah. Right? yeah. All right, I like what we're doing here. Oh, all right. She's fed. Cool. There's the mistake. As soon as I get that first pick, I feel like I should have walked up a little bit. There you go. That's absolutely correct. <sighs> So do you think that the Winston was the best person to hit with this ult? Absolutely not. <laughs> the, the, for? the tankiest that the tankiest person presenting themselves, and that's the one I went for. I I should I said I can't tell because of the red glare there. Is that a May standing next to him? Oh, uh, that's a mercy. mercy. Thankfully yeah, you hit the yeah. mercy, but that was not intentional. Oh, yeah. That's just because the hitbox is huge. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely should have been looking for the the less tanky of the option there, whether it be the the Mercy or if, if there was another one there going after the Winston. I think, I think was Hanzo stupid. was I think Hanzo was there at the time. Hanzo or May was, I think. So you so say yeah, you're you're right. That's good. <clears throat> I also shouldn't have led when I went for that hunt, so I shouldn't have led with the X swing. I should have tried to pull him with the knife and then get the swing on him. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good way to look at it, right? I think in this case, it's just like, you know, your Baptiste died. I think there was just not enough healing to keep you up, right? Sometimes that is just going to happen, right? You run out of resources and you lose. What happens, right? Yeah. Big deal. But what we've seen is like, like, that was kind of the first time where, where an altercation occurred that we really had no influence over, right? Like, a lot of the other, like, things that have happened this game, like, we've seen that, like, we, we had influence over how it turned out, right? Um, so, yeah. And then here, we're just going for whatever we can, right? But, you know, it, it, it's, it's just kind of like we're, our team's staggering in, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, with that, do you kind of have any other, like, questions about, like, Junker Queen or about, like, tanking in general? Or? No, I, I think, like, like you said at the beginning, I think that, uh, these are all things that can apply to no matter who I play, like the whole not straight lining, using cover, having having more uh, positional awareness of my teammates. Yeah. Um, I think part of the way I can correct that other than like obviously working on these things in game too is like I'm just I'm the type of person that's really distracted by little things like chat. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, like, if you're distracted, just squelch that shit. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's why I'm thinking of getting get rid of the voice chat. And I, I know one of my biggest things is I tend way too much to worry about what teammates are doing. Mm-hmm. So learning to tune that out and like just focus and ask myself why did I do this or why did this go wrong? What can I do better next fight and stuff like that? I think would go a long way. Yeah. Here, uh, what I'm gonna do just just because it's like um. When it when it comes to bronze players, um, now th- th- this doesn't seem to apply to you, but I'm gonna be upfront and say most bronze players play like they don't have monitors, and sometimes I worry that like just like normal explainative coaching isn't gonna be helpful enough for them. Um, so what I so what I do just and, and like even even though you aren't seeming to fit this, you're like you actually seem very cognitive of what's going on in the game, right? Uh, as far as like bronze players tend to go. Um, but like, and then again, this is not me trying to be like rank elitist or anything. This is, no, no, no. I, I'm not even, I'm not even shitting you. I have coached multiple bronze players who place their crosshairs like this. They're, they're like, oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's the type of stuff where I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to give you as many resources as I can. So uh, I'm going to play a game on the hero that we just went over, uh, okay. like just a quick, just a quick play. And we'll, uh, I, I play at a, about a, um, mid diamond, maybe low masters level. We'll see. Um, I've, I've been climbing a lot recently. Um, I, I peaked masters in overwatch one, nice. uh, and I have coached up to like top 500. Uh, in fact, I'm actually coaching here. Um, where is, where is he? I believe he is 50 right now. Uh, here we go. Click. I've been coaching this guy a lot. Okay. Um, recently. And then, um, damage is, uh, where's default defaults up here, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't mind my asking, what kind of things can I uh, can I do outside of playing to uh, work on growing game knowledge? Uh, outside of working on growing game knowledge, I mean, Overwatch is like the game of situations, right? Okay. Chess, okay, j- just as an instance, chess is an infinitely simpler game than Overwatch, and chess has ten to the power of a hundred and twenty. Uh, different states of the board that you were going to have, you know, if you're playing chess, you'll have to analyze and figure out what to do with, right? Um, so, like, it's just understanding each situation and how to approach it, right? As well as improving your mechanics, right? You say you already play COD, so I assume you have, like, shooter knowledge and you probably, like, know aim trainers that you can use, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've played, yeah. I've been in the competitive scene for COD for going on seven years now. I see. Yeah. Aim? Okay. I like this is this is like from what I've been able to tell, uh, for, like Overwatch versus every other game. Overwatch is not only the most difficult game to aim in, um, out of all the shooters, because of like how many different things go on on the screen and what type of movement. Because like most games have like they'll have a slide and they'll have like a jump and then they might have one or two miscellaneous moves. Almost every character in this game has some type of speed boost, some type of hitbox manipulation, some type of like major movement ability, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and different hitbox sizes as well. Overwatch is definitely the hardest shooter to aim in, and then you also not only have to aim guns, you have to aim um, other random abilities, you have to aim projectiles, and then you also have to be able to analyze the situations, right? 
Um, oh my god, where the fuck are the supports? Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. Uh, what is going on? I can't play until the supports are here. What the fuck? Well, I would love to show you. Why are the supports not picking characters? I'm going to queue for a different game. Sometimes that's just what quick play does. <laughs> we do not we do not speak for the quick play players. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Overwatch is definitely a game where like aim is just so important. You've got to have really good aim, really good reaction time if you can. Um, so anything that'll train those is just good. Then you also just got to know how to analyze a situation and get through it. So it's like, okay, enemy team is use like X and X. I can push with X, right? Or it's like, uh, also, also matchups. I would say as a tank player, this is coming from like a fellow tank player. Um, the best thing you can do is just know your matchups, right? So if I'm a Junker Queen, I see the other teams on Doomfist. I immediately have this like thought in my head of like what the Doomfist is going to try to do and how I'm going to counter that, right? Just like analyzing my matchup. So I see Doomfist. I'm like, okay, Doomfist is going to go in with some sort of movement cooldown. Um, and then he's going to either try to stay in with it, get out, or he's going to power block, right? I need to decide how I'm going to punish each of those options, right? So if he decides to stay in, then he has no movement cooldown, and I am going to try to just like just like kill him while he's there, right? Um, if he decides to power block while he's in, uh, before using another cooldown, I'm going to wait the power block out and then wait for him to use that second movement cooldown, and then I'm just going to push on him because he has no cooldowns left and I win. Um, and if he gets out, then that means he has no movement cooldowns and he can't really stop me from pushing his team, so I'm going to look for his back line, right? Um, so now, like, I kind of have a game plan up against every Doomfist player I run into. And there's also, like, other situations. So it's like, um, let's say I'm playing, like, Roadhog, right? And I see a Doomfist. I'm like, okay, I know that I can hook Doomfist when he power blocks. So, like, I should be always looking for that. Like, if I see a Doomfist power blocking and I have my hook, I should go for that. <laughs> um, so knowing, like, knowing, like, your matchups and, like, what your strengths are and what your game plan is in any even situation is important. So, like, here I see I have a Tracer and a Sombra who are kind of going to be flanking a lot. And I have Kiriko Maru who are going to be pocketing me. So I'm really just going to be trying to take as much attention as possible for this Tracer and this Sombra. So I'm just going to be like, I'm just kind of going to be, be bold and brash type shit. So yeah. Holy shit. Oh yeah, I can definitely see where pop shotting around corners is helping. Oh shit. Okay, my team exploded. <laughs> That'll happen sometimes. I also had some frame jobs, so I wasn't getting the kills I wanted to. Um, but yeah, so like there, I'm literally just like dancing around and just like shooting as much as I can, hitting my cooldowns, right? And now I have my ult. It sucks that I gave them point, though. That's on me. I should not have given them point, though. They have Kiriko? Uh, yes, they do, so I need to wait. Uh, this, so this Junker Queen wasted her shout, so I'm just pushing her. Use your cleanse. Alright, I heard it. Okay. Yeah. That happens, that happens. <coughs> the Junker Queen's name is Brap. <laughs> What a bitch. I did nothing to you. Damn it. 
I don't have shout soon enough. I die here. Yep. Oh no, there's something I don't do. What? Between the uh, the knife and the axe swings, I see you're still finding ways to the melee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to make the most out of every like interaction that I do, you know. <clears throat> and also, like, I kind of like on the way there, I do have time to shoot, so I don't think I touch. Nope. Yeah, I don't have time to touch. Okay. But yeah. Uh, sometimes I just let, I, I just like let like lower rank players watch me play, just because you know sometimes you will learn something that I didn't you know think about or like there's something that I do that like um, I might not even notice, <laughs> um, and then like you like see it and you're like oh I can do that you know, and sometimes it's just good to kind of see what I was talking about more applied. Not to say that I'm perfect at it, obviously. That was a very chaotic game because there isn't like a lot of cover on that point. That's why you don't generally play Junker Queen there. This one's a little bit more queen friendly though. There's a lot more cover. I'm definitely learning favorable matchups. So like playing when I'm playing against a diva as junk, I feel a lot uh, pretty confident. Or like if uh, before when I would face a Reinhardt playing Ramatra, it didn't bother me because I know I can punch her a shield, those sort of things. Right. Right, right, right. What are you doing here, Ball? What the <laughs> fuck? Why was he there? How was he there? Oh, he was on high ground. I see. Yeah. Man, get off of me. You're you're so mean to me. I did nothing to you. <laughs> These guys are actually huge fans of me. No way there. No way. That's, that's a joke. I'm just. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> I just like, I just get slammed. And then like, I got the fucking, I get like, it's like, it's like COD zombies. Fetch me there. So like everybody just pushes my ass. <laughs> no, this is, this is all been extremely helpful. Cause it, now that I'm thinking about it, it's make, it's making things in my head click like, uh, one of the things I've been trying to do to get better is to analyze uh, pro player pro, pro tanks and kind of learn mm -hmm. what what they do. And the main mm -hmm. one that I try to watch and learn from is Fearless. And I notice that he does a lot of what you were telling me to do with the cover. Now that I think about yeah. it, yeah, of course he's fucking way better at it than, than <laughs> I am at it. <laughs> Fearless is uh, Fearless is best Winston in the world for sure. Hopefully next season we'll get to see a little bit more of this hero in play. Of uh, Junker Queen? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the problem is she was meta, and then they nerfed her really hard. Um, oh, come on, that doesn't hit. Bullshit. Come here. That was good, actually. That, that was cover. I'll give him that. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, not all games are winnable. That's another thing to, like, keep in mind. Um... Like, for example, there, like, if you're getting 200 to Ode on control, like, you might have been able to get your team a little bit of percentage, but, like, realistically, you're not going to be able to carry hard enough to win a whole game most of the time. Like, unless you are actually throwing, which I, which, you know, I, I wasn't there um, from what I could tell. Um, it was more just, like, my team got ran over. It's, like, I don't need to worry about that in the game, but, like, afterwards, it's, like, in order to not, like, get self-conscious or anything, I'm just, like, yeah, I mean, that wasn't a winnable game, right? It's whatever. I just, I just move on and go next, right? Should I, um, should I like be focusing less on statistics too when I play and more of like what I'm doing in game? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Like there is like um even though I had like less kills than my Baptiste, for example, like I know that like I had a lot of people on me and I know that like I was doing what I could given that information. Um 
So like my Baptiste having extra kills doesn't have anything to do with me being bad. You know, it, it probably has more to do with the fact that like there were so many people on me that he was less contested. But like, you know, I, I, I shouldn't just look at that and be like, oh, I have less kills than my Baptiste. I'm throwing, you know. Right. Sorry if you heard random clicking throughout the session. I was uh, typing up some notes to take with me. No, that's fine. I actually didn't. Uh, there's some really loud keyboards in the gymnasium. <laughs> uh, so I wouldn't mind it even if I did, but I didn't hear anything. But yeah, so uh, do you have any other uh, questions or anything? Or are you just going to kind of put your head down and play? No, I think that was all pretty self-explanatory. I think I'm going to start putting some games together and it kind of gave me an idea too of how to uh in between coachings how to kind of review my own stuff with which i should be doing a lot more mm -hmm. than i do actually right <laughs> yeah well um yeah i hope that this is a good session if you want you can put something in session feedback up to you um and then uh, also we have a website which is kind of like um the, the gymnasium wants to do like more cool things and just like some community stuff here and there and then like some free coaching we want to be able to do like a bunch of really cool things and like do a lot more um events and stuff um and what kind of funds that is we have a website where you can book our coaches for more like different types of coaching because all we do in uh like through request a coach is we'll do like a free one-on-one -on -one bot review and we'll do it, like once a week right oh. um and that's like kind of all the all that you'll get from that but if you go to our website, then like you can like book us for more specific stuff. So like for example, if you wanted me like watch you play live and kind of talk you through that and like you know like as you're playing, talk you through what you sh what you should be doing, like that's something that I can do for sure, right? Okay. Um, and like if you were, if you were on a team, which it doesn't look like you are from what I from what I can tell, but like um, if you did ever get on a team, like we like that's also where I'd be like able to coach your team, right? Okay. And as far as far as Overwatch coaching goes, we keep it very cheap. So like um our cheaper coaches are like um 12 dollars an hour and our more expensive ones are 16 an hour um but uh like for example spilo does like 30 an hour i believe and uh a10 does like 50 an hour um so as far as overwatch coaching goes it's uh pretty pretty damn cheap okay yeah once once uh once everything with the new house and everything gets settled i'll probably be doing a ton of the uh the paid coaching sessions yeah i mean feel free that's uh that's more cool things we're gonna do we have a uh, a big event actually coming up that uh hopefully will be really cool and uh after that we have another one planned so i, I know no no leaks but it should be pretty fun <laughs> and then you said these are once a week or once every two weeks the the free ones they are yeah. once a week but it's like it's once a week after you actually got the coaching so it wouldn't be okay. it wouldn't be a week after you post it it would be a week from today i got you so yeah that, that's that's the rule we go off of perfect Although if if if, if uh, we're we're about to get two new coaches, if they can't pick up some uh, some of the slack that we have, I might have to make it two weeks because I am doing like two sessions a day, and I am like uh, and like the other the coaches. Out. <laughs> I'm not I'm not burning out. It's just I can't keep, I can't keep up. I don't think I'll ever burn out on coaching. Uh, I love doing this shit, but um, I'm doing two a day, and I am still falling behind. And like the other coaches are doing like probably two a week, uh, which is fine. Like they they only they are only obligated to do like one a week, but you know the more the merrier, obviously. Um. But uh, but yeah. No, it means it, it means the world to me that you guys are doing this because it makes it it it's nice to be in an environment that doesn't just automatically devalue players because they're not a certain rank, which is what I'm used to. So that's really nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, I mean, look at me, right? I started out bronze. I started out fucking. I think I think my lowest was 700 SR, um, in Overwatch One. Which uh, did, did you play Overwatch One? very very briefly well i'll just say 700 is like lower than bronze 5 basically um i started out at like 700 sr and then i climbed to masters over the course of like two years and now here i am like being able to coach like some of the best players in the world you know man if, so, I, could, if I could just get the hell out of bronze and finally make my goal of silver one i'd be happy <laughs> Oh, trust me, my friend. It's it's going to go a lot further than that. If you make that, you're addicted. <laughs> if, you, if you make that climb, I don't think you're quitting. No, probably not. I I, I have too much pet, too much love for this game. So yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> yeah. Well. All right. I, well, I am going to go ahead and head out, friend. All right. Well, I I appreciate everything. Thank you so much. That was really helpful. Yeah.
Thank you. Let me know how your games go. I'll see you later. GG's. Yep. Take care.